Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We're continuing our look at hyperbolic geometry. We're just sort of starting out here. Hyperbolic geometry in the uh, Poincaré disk model. There are other models out there, but this is one where all our constructions are going to take place inside the hyperbolic disk. Nothing interesting will happen outside. Although, since we are doing a, a two-dimensional Euclidean plane construction, we have occasionally needed to do things outside just to make the, uh, the everything work using our straight edging compass. Okay, But today we finish off our hyperbolic straight edging compass set. So as I mentioned, we had inverse points and those are points outside uh, and we, we just made a tool for that just for ease. But then we also have hyperbolic lines, which we saw last time. So we created our new straight edge and everything stays inside the disk. It's all nice and good. But we don't have our compass. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to create a we're going to create a, a compass tool, a circle where you specify the center and a point on on the circumference of the circle. So we could have say our center here, and then we go out some distance with our point. We want this the hyperbolic circle. So we don't just want this circle because you'll notice that's a nice Euclidean circle, but uh, as we move around, this circle, part of it lies outside the disk. We've got a problem. This is not a hyperbolic circle. Well, we're going to fix that today. Okay. So, uh, we'll start everything brand new. We've got a point here, uh, A and B. So, I want to create, uh, using straight edge and compass, I want to create the new hyperbolic circle, which will have to stay inside our disk. Okay, and we've been using our GeoGebra tools uh, rather than doing everything strictly by hand with straight edge and compass, but all the tools we've been using can be done just with straight edge and compass. It just makes the videos longer. So I'm going to say A is going to be the center, and we want to pass uh, through B. So AB is going to act as our radius, but we don't measure our radius straight from A to B. That's Euclidean geometry. No, our, our length is along A to B. Okay, so it's along our, our arc here, which is a straight line with regards to hyperbolic geometry. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need to bring back the center of our plane. or not, uh, Yeah, our plane, our disk, sorry. And we're going to connect it up with the center. Now the center for the hyperbolic circle is going to lie on here. Unfortunately, hyperbolic circles are just regular circles, they're just the center isn't where you think it should be. Because otherwise sometimes wherever, if you just had it centered at A, you could make your circle lie outside as I showed you. We don't want that. We want to force the circle to stay in here. Alright, the next thing we need is this tangent tool. And we're going to be tangent to this circular arc, the arc that makes the line AB in hyperbolic uh, space, and we want it to be tangent to the point B. So now we jump back to our point tool. The point of intersection between this diameter that has A on it, the diameter of our big uh, disk model, and the intersection of the tangent to the circular arc at B, this gives us the center of our circle. At least the center of the circle that we're going to draw as a Euclidean circle. The center of the hyperbolic circle is still here at A. So now if I take this point and I go through A, now I've got my hyperbolic circle. So we're going to turn it into a tool and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, make it a tool, make it a tool. So we want uh, the output to be circle E and our input object, so we don't need any of those. We need our disk. There we go. And we're going to call this the hyperbolic circle tool. Goes nicely with our hyperbolic line tool. And we made another icon just for that. All right. So now, in addition to inversion points, which I may get rid of in the future because we aren't going to be making a whole lot of them, because now we have our, our circle and, and, and 
line, but we have the hyperbolic line and hyperbolic circle tools. Okay, So we can talk about this line through A and B inside the disk. We can talk about A to another point on here through the disk. Now the interesting thing here, uh, let's, let's call this guy C. The interesting thing is, although it doesn't look like it, a to B is the same hyperbolic distance as A to C. And that's what I think is really interesting. Because the Euclidean distance, right now, A and C are much closer than A and B. But from a hyperbolic perspective, it's the same distance. That's what makes it the circle. Because a circle is a circle. It's a given center and then the same distance out in all directions. The problem is we, we measure distance differently in a hyperbolic space. Okay? Now, as you get closer to the center, things start to Euclideanize. And if our center is uh, center of the, the disk, which incidentally should be hidden because we don't need them. But as we get closer to the center of the, the hyperbolic disk as represented by a circle in Euclidean space, Euclidean on the Euclidean plane, things start to work out and you'll realize, well, A to B sort of looks like A to C. But then you can do other things, like A moves really, really close, and now your center's out here. Okay. Now, as, as points get to further towards the circumference of our, our circle, these, the, the distance between A and B starts to become more and more infinite. I mentioned, uh, I think last time, we talked about these ideal points, which are points on the circumference of our red, big red disk, our, our, our Poincaré disk model. And these are basically points at infinity, I, I said, to, to think about them like that. So B is becoming closer and closer to a point at infinity. And so our circle starts to have, our, our hyperbolic circle starts to have infinite size. No matter where I place A, it still becomes really big because it doesn't matter where your center is if your circle is near infinite radius. You're going to have basically everything. But as A and B get closer together, the circle does still shrink. Okay. So there you go. We're going to have something like that. Still an infinite distance. Even though it doesn't look, A and C look really close together, but still, based on the measurements, the way we measure in hyperbolic geometry, A to C is the same length as A to B. Now, I'm not going to do that sort of calculation. I'm not going to show you how we, we actually calculate line, uh, lengths in hyperbolic geometry, because this is more a series about the constructions. But, uh, yeah. So we'll bring B back, and we have our hyperbolic circle. We'll hide everyone else. But there it is. And you can see A is not the center of this circle. Right, the center should be somewhere in the middle there. But as A gets closer to the center of the disk that we're using to model hyperbolic geometry, it will become the center of this circle, and it will just become a regular Euclidean circle. Okay? We can even compare the two. Ah, they're basically identical. But then as I move A, we start to notice discrepancies. And we can always pick out which one is not the hyperbolic one, because the hyperbolic circle tries, we might, as long as A and B stays inside, it will never, ever go away. Where did this line come from? Let's get rid of him. And there we go. So, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see what I can construct with this uh, new straight edge and compass in the following videos. Thanks for watching.